It's officially fall now. It's the time of death. That's why we start feelings off this week with the emotion. Grief. Grief's a hard one, man. Doesn't go away easily. Even if, you know, it's something that you can feel pretty good about. Like, hey, Penn State, you lost by one. You still lost. And it was an undefeated season. And now you only have one loss, but it's still a loss. It's also a loss, too, where you got 14 points on the board and, and feeling pretty good about yourself. And then Ohio State just said, nah, nah. We'd like to run that way. No, but this way, no. We'd like to pass the ball. Nope. Last drive of the game, you had negative five yards. You were almost in field goal position to start. That's grief. Just embrace it. Just feel it. Lay down on the ground, cry if you need to, right? Trust me, I'm a Florida fan. I've been there like, like the whole season, right? floor's comfy. Come on down. Which leads us to the next thing. Grief's often caused by an unseen threat coming into your life and just knocking all your pottery over. That's why you need to be vigilant. Second emotion, vigilance. Be on guard. There are things to worry about. Things that you shouldn't necessarily be scared of, but you should be aware. For instance, Ohio State. You go to Iowa next, okay? Remember what happened to Michigan last year at Iowa? Okay, that was a night game. This is at 3.30. I'm not saying there's some magical reason that you should be less scared of a game that happens in the day in Iowa, but uh, you should be. It's just not as scary. I don't know why. Like, the chaos factor just isn't quite as high, right? Maybe everyone's feeling really good from waving at the kid in the kid's hospital or something, but they're just they're just not as amped for some reason. I, I don't know. So be aware of that Ohio State, okay? On your way to possibly finishing out the string, winning the Big Ten, getting ambitions above and beyond that of the conference, getting into the playoff. I think that you should be aware, Penn State, that you're playing Michigan State, coming off of a harrowing overtime loss to Northwestern. That f***ing dog! Yeah. But what you should know is that you're playing Michigan State. Michigan State really doesn't care how pretty it is, all right? Any landing's a good landing. We just turned Mark D'Antonio into Launchpad McQuack from DuckTales, but that's completely accurate, okay? As long as it gets on the ground, they're fine. Finally, I need you to be aware, but not scared of LSU Alabama. Not that I have to, like, warn you about anything. Because first of all, you're, you're more talented than any team in the nation. You go, like, two or three deep with, like, four or five stars. It's just this embarrassing pile of, of athletic riches you have. So I know that you're already aware. I also know that psychologically you're fine-tuned, like you're just honed by Nick Saban constantly looking for things to worry about, all right? And the thing that I guarantee you that he said this week is that you should be aware and not scared of that point spread because this is the biggest spread between LSU and Alabama since like, I don't know, 2001 or something. And, you know, he's going to mention that, all right? Even though you're going to win, right? That's what he has to do is to like look for things to be insecure about, right? Like you're walking to LSU and they'll be like, all of these people hate your mother. That's, that's not true. Actually, that's totally true at LSU. It's, it's not true everywhere. It's totally true at LSU. Everyone in that stadium absolutely hates your mother, every single individual Alabama football player. They're committed is what I'm saying. And under vigilance, I'd include Georgia too. I know everything is just keyed in just so right now for Georgia. You're about to face a South Carolina team that has an outstanding defense and, and kind of a probability machine on offense. Will Muschamp's dangerous, okay? Not just on the football field. Like if you approach him in a grocery store, air horns, flares, lots of warning. He doesn't like surprises. I think that after you've gone through the cycle of grief and after you've become properly vigilant, then you can take a moment, and yeah, just a moment, to express a little admiration, a little bit of, uh, of gratitude for the excellence that you just see all around you, right? For instance, Khalil Tate, he's the Pac-12 Player of the Week, four weeks running. He's basically won the Heisman in a single month because he's unstoppable, absolutely unstoppable. For instance, last week uh, against Washington State, they stacked the box figuring, oh, we'll stop him. Cool, he just passed for 270 yards and threw it over your head. Football's not hard sometimes, especially when you're six foot two and you can pull away from an entire defense and just look like you're jogging. I think it's also good that you have a little bit of admiration for Lamar Jackson because Lamar Jackson, uh, it's not his fault the defense is made of crepe paper and other fine paper mache like materials. This is a mixed media arts project, Bobby Petrino, and you really didn't bring any chicken wire, did you? Chicken wire is what makes up a defense. Otherwise, you just got this kind of mush that sits there. And you know who's sitting in art class just doing the best he can, trying to earn an A with a D-grade set of materials? That's Lamar Jackson. Still averaging like over 400 yards of offense a game. But we're all used to it because you think Superman would be something that your whole neighborhood would take note of every single day. And after two weeks, they're like, ah, that guy. That's Lamar Jackson this year. Sorry, Lamar. We still love you. And finally, I think Bedlam is probably something you should admire because after, I don't know, 80 years of this really not being a rivalry in any way at all, it's now a genuine contest every single year with national implications. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State line up with two astonishing quarterbacks, all right? Mason Rudolph on one side, Baker Mayfield on the other. You'll know Mason Rudolph as the one who's probably not, I don't know, doing the Russell Westbrook stuff, like wearing a shirt that says Oklahoma Trader, because that's what Baker Mayfield did against Texas Tech last week, because Texas Tech fans sent him that shirt when he transferred from there. He's had like a really complicated history. Mason 
Mason Rudolph's just the guy who throws deep, all right? If you get confused, right? On one side, Baker Mayfield, basically Russell Westbrook and cleats. And then on the other side, there's the guy throwing deep. It's fun. Watch it. One last thing. Iowa State plays at West Virginia. They're probably going to win. That means Iowa State will have seven wins. It's astonishing what Matt Campbell and Iowa State have done this year in upsetting not only TCU, Oklahoma, but also the expectations that they would continue to be Iowa State. Uh, we were... We're all wrong, and I'm sure Matt Campbell will stay in Ames, Iowa for the rest of his career. Won't leave. Fine place. There are other things than money and life. That's what Coach thinks. He's happy, and it's a unique community. Never leave. She's just right there. This is a lot of time and effort to devote to irritating a fan base that's, you know, about 1,200 really, really excited people right now. But that's what the Internet's for, niche audiences. Hey, Iowa State, Matt Campbell's leaving. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. So those are our three emotions, right? We got grief. Just, just sit with it. Lay down on the floor. Got plenty of company. Go Gators. You have vigilance. Remember, not fear, but vigilance. In other words, I see the Will Muschamp coming right at me. I'll take appropriate measures, but I won't let him frighten me. He'll probably frighten you. But for the most part, just be vigilant. And admiration. In other words, pausing, taking a minute and saying, you know what? Life's moving real fast. I'm going to take a second to just wave at that beautiful thing as it passes by. For instance, something like, I don't know, Arizona and USC playing for the Pac-12 South title as everyone predicted. Rich Rodriguez is going to be an oil baron, y'all. Just wait.